Hi, I'm Tim May, and I'm moderating this series of 10 conversations on expressive photography with Phil Douglas. Phil understands the nature of expressive photography as well as anyone I know. For 35 years, he directed the Douglas Visual Workshops, and he helped more than 10,000 communications professionals make and use photographs to express ideas, tell stories, and convey meaning. Phil says he's learned a great deal from these, those workshop participants over the years, and he en also enjoys learning from the tens of thousands of images he's made in more than 60 countries. I first met Phil uh, at Santa Fe Workshops in 2004, and we went on to photograph together across North America, as well as in Europe, Asia, Africa, and South America. Both Phil and I have displayed our images on various photographic websites, and Phil has put together a 5,000 image cyber book on expressive photography at pbase.com. You can find the link to that cyber book in the notes below. It has drawn more than 10 million visitors since he started in 2003. They have left more than 12,000 comments under his pictures, and Phil has answered each one of them. When the pandemic brought Zoom into our lives, I asked Phil to bring that cyber book to life in this set of 10 conversations on expressive photography. And now he has. Enjoy. Expressive photography. What is it? That's yeah. what I ask here. <laughs> Talk and about so, it a little bit. So let's begin by looking at a photograph here. Okay. A little bit here. I, ma I made this picture many years ago in uh, U uh, Russia. And uh, it's, a, it's a church uh, in, on Kishi Island in the Sindus move, Lake. Move your cursor. Move my cursor. There okay. you go. Was in this lake, and I uh, was uh, wanting to photograph it. And you know, a standard picture of a church does not excite me. There's nothing wrong with a standard church if if you want a postcard, but my feeling was, this is a memory for me. This is an idea. There's something beyond the appearance of this church that's important. So I say to myself, what is it? And I start looking, not at the church, but around the church, and I notice these clouds, like fingers coming down from the sky. And they had a, a sense of mystery to them. And to me, the Russian Orthodox Church speaks of mystery. I don't know anything about this religion. And uh, it's a mysterious entity, and it is evoked or express in this image. Shall we move to the next one? This one was in Croatia. Uh, it was a park called Plivici Lake State Park, and national park. And I uh, walked down to the, uh, the lake, and I saw these fish in the water, very clear water, and I saw ducks on the surface, and I noticed that the fish weren't uh, congregating underneath the duck itself. They kept their space, social distancing, right? Um, and this, this again evoked, expressed an idea to me uh, that these are separate species, and while they depend on each other for many things, for example, the uh, the ducks will feed on things they find down in the water, and many times they'll they'll distribute it uh, inadvertently to the fish. What do you think of this, Tim? I love the circularity of it. Uh, the the yeah, and uh, the color gets to me too. I love the the uh, water color. So much we think of water as blue. That's not blue. <laughs> no, it's not. Well, it is kind of here. Right. There. It's interesting. As the light moves to it, the, you know, the angle of the camera obviously creates that difference. 
I would think. I would think so too. Remember this trip? You and I were together in Havana, uh, Cuba, and uh, we were photographing in the Colombo Cemetery. And uh, th th there was a lot of corrosion, a lot of pollution, and the, the monuments, the uh, mausoleums were very, very physically unattractive. They were, they were corroded and like death itself, I guess. And I made this image and converted it to black and white because I wanted to suck all the life out of it. And I moved from side to side. And as I moved from side to side, the sculpture of the woman seemed to move as well so that now she's half hidden. You see, you can see that the uh, line runs right down her face. And that to me expressed grief. She doesn't want to be seen. Or perhaps it expressed she's leaving us. Maybe this is a, a, uh, a sculpture of the deceased and she's departing. So in other words, it's, the image is expressing the ideas that I want to express. Now, whether or not the viewer sees the same idea, that's up to the viewer. And that's always the magic of, it, of expressive photography, because it's a partnership between the viewer and the photographer. Like for example, this image that again, Tim and I were shooting together, remember this trip, Fort Bragg, California? Right, which may get its name changed. Yes, Braxton Bragg was a Confederate general, that's right. <laughs> At any event, uh, the, these fish, I moved in with a wide angle lens and it looks like a trip in the hell. Right, it sure does. And that was my intention. This is not an advertisement for Red Snapper. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'm expressing death here, and that's what these fish are. They're dead. Right. And, and again, we, we, this, this image is a confrontation with death. Right. It's it's a, such a powerful one. Thank you. And I go oh. ahead. Well, I, I was just thinking about you know I've looked at this now several times and I hadn't seen the line from the scales on the one fish going up to like the silver-eyed fish. The no down right at the end there's the highlight of lines uh, along the edge. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It leads to that silver eye, the biggest eye up there in the middle. This here? No, down, up, up, here. up, 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 up. Up? Up. There's uh, like a silver eye. Up. A silver. This one? Nope. Next one over to the right. Yes, there. this one. And see the, see the highlight of the fins next to it on the left? Yes. Oh, that line. And there's also a channel that leads up to it here. Right. Cool. It's fascinating. The more you study an image this complex, the more you see. Right. So this is where detail comes in. And I'll be devoting a, an entire module to detail uh, in a, a, at another time. I made this in the uh, Phoenix Desert Botanical Garden. And, it uh, was at the time when the sculptor, the glass sculptor, Dale Chihuly, Ch Chihuly was having a, a show here. He, uh, he had sculpted glass pieces and they were illuminated with lights in the evening. And uh, you can see his glass sculpture of the plants here in the foreground and behind them I placed cacti, living cacti. And I'm contrasting, again, art, to life and life to art. And that's what it, it's a balance, it's a relationship. And that's what I try to express in this picture. Mm -hmm. Interesting, I didn't have my camera with me on the trip, but I had my, my cell phone and I made this with my iPhone. And it was a very, very, very interesting photograph, but I didn't like the color. So I simply converted it to black and white in, in the computer. And it is a very strong image. And considering it was made by a by an iPhone four or five, I mean, 
it's, it's a miracle. And the thing about it for me, I, I, you know, we've talked about photography now for 15 years and I, I am doing on FaceTime a theme every month and I did a month of black and white. Mm -hmm. And it was after the month of black and white that I, I really began to understand the power of abstracting through black and white and how it brings a, an image down to its essence in a way that uh, I've come to learn much more about, basically through you. <laughs> I'm still learning. I mean, the, the beautiful thing about teaching photography is you never stop learning. You learn from those that you're teaching and you learn from the images that you make as you strive to learn from doing. You and I were together when we made the, when, when, we, when I made this image. Uh, you made your own image of it. <clears throat> we, this was in Utah, and we were driving along, and we 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 saw this, and we reacted simultaneously. Stopped the car, <laughs> and we got out to make this shot. And uh, what hit me right away was again the relationship between different forms of nature. I mean, that cloud is a natural form. It's ephemeral, it's transitory, it's not a permanent feature of nature, but it's there. And it's the dominant part of this image. Whereas the buttes have been there for millions of years. And the land that is around us has also been there for a long, long time. And yet our eyes keep moving up to what we don't expect to see. It's an incongruity, and I have a, a whole module on incongruities uh, to share with you. And when you have an incongruity, that would be something that is essentially out of place. You don't expect to see it in this way. This enormous inverted V pointing right to that mesa that right. expresses an idea. What were you saying, Tim? Uh, yeah, right. And I, I have seen mine recently, and I did it more with the uh, Mesa three quarters, like into thirds. Mm -hmm. And I, I really find your centering of it much more powerful. I did it in thirds, too. One of the things that I do, and I'm sure you do as well, is that you don't just make a picture. You make right. multiple images of the same thing. You, we call it working a picture, working an idea. Right. And I mean, with digital photography, there's no cost involved except a few minutes of time. Well, so there's about a, an hour of time later when you're trying to decide between the <laughs> exactly. 40 inches. The more you shoot, the more, <laughs> right. the more time is involved in, in editing. Right. Rembrandt and photography. I, I, this fascinated me. Uh, Don't forget to move your cursor. Thank you. Thank you. Remind me. <laughs> I'm a, a neophyte to uh, YouTube and to Zoom and to sharing. Been in photography for many years, but all this new technology is challenging for sure. Uh, I, I, I was visiting the, 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 the Rix Museum in Amsterdam, and I came to the Night Watch, which is arguably, arguably the most famous painting in the Dutch National Museum. Uh, and it's by Rembrandt. It was, it was a commissioned work. It's a huge work uh, called The Night Watch. He did it for a group of men who watched over the city at night. It, it was a, a, like a men's club that took turns watching the streets. Uh, uh, and uh, they got together and they had him, they commissioned a painting. And uh, he did something that no one had ever done. He, he used shadows and he, he made some people big and some people small and some people almost hidden or completely hidden. And uh, they didn't like it. They, they, they refused to pay him. And he rolled it up and put it in storage and he died bankrupt. And uh, this painting is now probably one of the, the greatest masterpieces of of art. And this woman is doing, bringing her art to it with a little digital camera, so a little tiny 
two megapixel camera. Probably I made this back in the, the early 2000s. And here she is taking the night watch. And I got behind her and I contrasted her scale to the massive scale of the painting and her hands holding that camera, pressing the button. And here you have all these people not reacting to her. They're forever reacting to each other in that moment. And I turned it into black and white, which by removing the color made it far more abstract and allowed the red shirt or the, or the, uh, the, the green shirted woman to meld, so to merge into the painting. The yeah. For me, this transcends time because I am continually, I've now seen this image several times, in, interested in that woman, the whitish woman in the painting who appears to be looking at the woman taking the, photo the photograph. Right. And first of all, in terms of what you've said about the, uh, the night watch, why is a woman there? But secondly, it's like transcending time in, in who's taking my picture? What, what are you doing? It's like we yeah, find- he's, he's surprised, what's that in her hand? Right, yes. Yeah. It's Never like seen we find, like before. We find it's like being able to do street photography in another century. <laughs> it is. It is. That's fascinating. Just fascinating. I made this picture in a caravan in Tunisia, and it was a it, it's a holy city and it's full of mosques and it's beautiful. And I went out one early morning and walked the streets of of the neighborhoods and found this man standing with a bike uh, talking to another man. And I realized that I had a streetscape image or, or if you want to call it a, a landscape, I guess it's also a landscape because it gives you a, a sense of place. It gives you layers, that there are different layers of meaning here. You've got, it has rained and you've got the, the, the wet uh, channel of puddles leading to this man. This arch has been here for some time, connecting a, like a bridge across the street. Why would they build an arch there? Well, it, it, it probably delineates a border of some kind. You're leaving this person or this, this political or this royal area, and you're entering in the area of the mosque. And I believe that uh, this is a mosque here, and the, this large yellow wall is probably a part of that mosque. And so this is probably the entrance to the mosque's area. That's my guess. And you have the clouds rolling up and the colors, the play of color. I, I would never convert this to black and white because the beauty is the contrast in those subtle ancient colors. You, you remember Karawan, Tim? Remember the, the beauty right. of that city? It's just beautiful. Tim and I were also visiting Kiev in the Ukraine together. We were in this park and we were listening to this musician play this unique instrument. Very, very few of them around. This, this musician has a, a worried look on his face, doesn't he? Uh, with the lines in his head. And what I was trying to express here was a personal, emotional response. A personal emotional response tells a story about what he is doing, how he is feeling, what he may be thinking about. And to me, you know, to my way of seeing, he's, he's at least concerned. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the, you know, I structured the picture to also create tension between the instrument and the man. So what is tension? This is called negative space. It's a space between things. And what happens here is as these negative space narrows and you can see a, 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 a repetition here, the bridge of his nose, the line of the bridge of the nose echoes the line of that instrument, uh, the angle of that instrument and the curve here in the instrument echoes the curve of the forehead. And this is the narrowest part of that 
space through here. Uh, and in, in a narrow space, we accumulate tension. And the tension draws the eye to it. And it gives us a, an image that is whole. It's all together and it's active, it's full of energy. We were together here too, Tim, weren't we? In San Francisco, Ch Chinatown. And I made this photograph of a woman walking past a mural. And again, I was photographing the mural before the woman arrived. And I wanted to make an expression or a statement about a similarity between the art and the person. Life again imitates art was my idea. And this woman came down the street and her, she was looking down the whole way. She, was, she, she wasn't looking up. And when you look down, there's a natural curve here. And there's a curve here in the head of this giant bird. And there's also, you, you see echoes in the color here. The blue feathers echo the blue jeans. And you have these directional flow of the, the bent metal posts and it's repeated by the reds and the oranges up through here. So when you have things repeating in a picture, it again joins it together and draws the eye through it. This is a Bengal tiger at dawn uh, in India in the Banhavgar National Park. And I'm on the back of an elephant. At early in the morning, they took us, they, the guide found out that there was a tiger awakening in the jungle and uh, we were sleeping in this lodge and he woke us up and said, would you like to photograph a tiger this morning? And all of us said yes. And they drove us in a Jeep to our elephants, which we had for two weeks. And we got on the elephant and he, the, the elephants walked us into the jungle and this tiger woke up and came over to the elephant that I was sitting on and was enraged. And I was making these pictures. Later on, I, 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 I was frightened. But during the process, I, I, you know, you realize that you're making photographs. And when you make photographs, you sometimes feel invulnerable, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it was a great memory in retrospect. But when, when, when I realized how close I was to those jaws and those teeth, uh, this expresses fury. Fury is an emotional response. We, we can be furious, but a tiger's fury is far more graphic. And uh, this is my final image for this manual. It's my most recent image. Uh, I made it with you, Tim, uh, during a visit here to Phoenix a few weeks uh, uh, before the, uh, no, a few days before the, uh, the coronavirus shut, a, shut life down for all of us. And uh, uh, ever since I made this picture, I've been getting people commenting on, saying that, that it represents, it symbolizes, it's a metaphor for the virus itself because it's thorny and spiky and it's reaching for this storm and the storm is menacing and it's, it, it's, it's a dynamic photograph of an idea, of a threat and a response to that threat. And it is the kind of picture that wouldn't mean what it means if we hadn't gone through what we just went through. I never had that in mind when we made this picture, Tim. We no. didn't even know from coronaviruses or COVID-19, did we? when we made this picture. Well, we were starting to get aware of it, but yeah. yeah. It was bad in China and it was bad in Washington, I remember. But a few days after you left, everything was shut down. And this was uh, a photograph we made because you looked out the window and you said, look at those clouds. Where right. can we go? And I said, well, the Sonoran McDowell Mountain Preserve is not far from my house. And we went there and we made pictures there. And this is the one that I felt was, was my strongest. And it is a good example of expressive photography. The, 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 
the angle, the low angle, the thrust of the, the, uh, uh, the cacti's arms, and the replication, how the, the cactus, uh, the cacti's arms imitate or replicate the flow of the clouds, the rhythm of the clouds. And is it an accident? Is it luck? No, these things happen all the time. But we as photographers have to be observant and make that connection. And so expressive photography is all about making connections. And that's where I'll leave you until we begin our series. This was the intro. We will begin the series with a look at the, the nature of abstraction, which is the first of the three principles that really govern expressive photography. And cool. Anything to add, Tim, before we uh, wrap it up? No, I was going to ask what's next, and you've answered that question. Uh, so uh, essentially, I look forward to the adventure and the information. <laughs>